Good morning. I want to greet you today in the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we begin our time together, I'd like for us to join in one voice in reciting the 23rd Psalm in the traditional King James language. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overfloweth. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, the 23rd Psalm is kind of like the Lord's Prayer. We're used to this traditional language. We, we like the traditional language, and we don't really want to mess with it a whole lot. And trust me, I get that. I understand that, and I find a lot of comfort in um, reciting that passage. Um, but it can also be like the Lord's Prayer in the sense that it becomes so familiar to us that we don't really think about the words as they're coming out of our mouths. And so it's important for us to pause occasionally to really reflect and maybe even hear it in a different way. And so today I want to read to you from a different translation. And this is uh, translated by Robert Alter, who is, uh, got it upside down there, Robert Alter, who is a Hebrew scholar. He spent his entire career translating the Hebrew Bible, and he's done it meticulously, carefully, thoughtfully. And so this is actually just one of three volumes, because not only does he translate but he also provides notes. And so uh, listen to the 23rd Psalm from a little different perspective. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In grass meadows, he makes me lie down, by quiet waters guides me. My life he brings back. He leads me on pathways of justice for his name's sake. Though I walk in the veil of death's shadow, I fear no harm, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. It is they that console me. You set out a table before me in the face of my foes. You moisten my head with oil, my cup overflows. Let but goodness and kindness pursue me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for many long days. Now, perhaps as you were listening, there were some phrases that sounded familiar, and there were probably some that sounded a little different. And this week, as I was reading this, this passage, uh, the, the verse that really stood, stood out to me was verse 3. He brings back my life. Which is traditionally translated, he restoreth my soul. When I was in seminary, I had to take two semesters of Hebrew. I had to learn vocabulary words and grammar and syntax and, and all of those fun things. And I specifically remember the Hebrew word nefesh. Because it had more possible meanings than any other word uh, that I came across. It can be translated soul or person, self or life. And Robert Alter chooses to translate this. He brings back my life instead of he restoreth my soul. Now, when you and I hear the word soul, we, we sometimes think of 
some kind of immaterial part of who we are that continues to exist after our physical body ceases to work. But that's probably not what the psalmist is talking about here. Instead, he's talking about our very lives, our very beings. He brings back our life. And we get the sense of some kind of medical attention here that the shepherd would be giving the sheep. I really wish that I had uh, Dr. Lauren Smith here with me because he's truly our resident sheep expert. I grew up in the suburbs of, of Barbersville, and I've never taken care of sheep in my entire life. And so I can't tell you a whole lot about what that would entail or what it looks like to be a shepherd. But we, we know that from reading this, that a shepherd is willing to do whatever it takes to care for the sheep. And in this passage, as we think of God being our shepherd, God is the shepherd that has the ability to bring our life back. And that's what it really means to restore our soul. As a pastor, I've done a lot of visitation in my career, going into hospitals and nursing homes. And I've seen this yellow bracelet that probably most of us are familiar with. And the bracelet has three letters, DNR, which stands for do not resuscitate. I'm sure that most of us are probably familiar with that, but just in case. DNR bracelet is uh, a symbol for medical professionals. And when a patient is wearing a DNR bracelet and they, they code, they stop breathing, that lets Healthcare professionals know not to give any further medical treatment, not to do CPR. Instead of having to go through some kind of charts or paperwork, paperwork that bracelet just lets everybody know to stop everything in that moment. And I, I want to say that I, I deeply respect anybody who reaches that conclusion to, to determine uh, to wear a DNR bracelet. Because some of us, we get to the point in our lives where we, where we recognize that we've been blessed with a nice, long life. And, and perhaps we want to just go in peace. And that's truly, truly understandable. But I began to think about the way that DNR might apply to more than just our physical bodies. What does it really mean to to give up hope in our lives, to reach a point where we think that we have uh, crossed through some kind of threshold, a point of no return, a point of hopelessness where we, f where we feel like that we will never experience real joy or hope or peace. Maybe some of us have reached the point in our lives where we don't believe that we will ever truly be loved and we've given up. And so we might be in perfectly good physical shape, but we've given up hope of really allowing God to restore our soul, to bring back our lives. And right now, as we are in the midst of this pandemic, that's one of my biggest concerns is the kind of mental health issues that we're going to have when we get to the other side of this. Because as human beings, we were created to live in community, to be in relationships. And being in isolation can be really challenging. It can be incredibly debilitating for who we are, especially when we're sitting at home and we're watching the news and we're hearing each and every day about how this situation is getting worse. It can be really easy at this point for each and every one of us to kind of just give up, to give up hope. But the psalmist reminds us that we have a good shepherd who is able to bring back our life. We have this hope even beyond the grave that in God there is eternal, everlasting life. But I think that there's something concrete here for us in the here and the now. 
in whatever situation or circumstances that we might be facing. There might be some of us who right now, we are really concerned about everything financially. Maybe things weren't going well before all of this, before we saw what's happening in the stock market. Perhaps you were struggling with a lot of debt and it left you in a place of, of hopelessness. I hope in these moments that you can trust and know that our God is the kind of God who brings us back to life. And with God, there is no point of no return. God is able to bring life from death. Maybe there are some of us who are struggling with anxiety and depression. We're giving in to the hopelessness. Maybe there are some of us who are really spiraling right now. I hope in these moments that you can find a quiet space in your heart and your mind just to listen, to reach out to God and know that God is reaching out to you with that rod and that staff, that God is the kind of God who leaves the 99 to go and find that one lost sheep. And if you're feeling kind of lost, know that God is calling out your name, that God loves you so much that God would send Jesus Christ into the world to find each and every one of us. You are precious in the sight of God. And today we can rejoice. We can rejoice because we have the kind of shepherd who brings our lives back. Brothers and sisters, this isn't over. We don't know what lies ahead. We do not know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. And it is our good shepherd. So may we trust. May we find comfort and peace and hope and knowing to whom we belong. Will you bow your heads with me as we pray? Loving God, we thank you that none of us are beyond your grasp, that you can bring us back to life. You can bring our own personal lives back. You can restore us and our nation and our world. We place our trust and our hope in you because you are good. I lift to you today, every single member, every single person who worships with us or who is connected to St. Andrew Church in any way. And I pray that your light and your spirit will fill them with your joy, your hope, your peace, and your love. May we experience your grace in a profound way as we're, dis as we're discovering who you are in these times of uncertainty. May we trust in you. For we pray all of these things in Christ's name. Amen. I hope that you will sense God's presence in these moments and in these days. And know God's love. Amen.